an iceberg is bigger than it looks, in its depth it's like the darkest secrets. In this iceberg video we will take a look at the main antagonist of the Crash Bandicoot gaming franchise, Dr. O'Neill Cortex. Mad Scientist Dr. O'Neill Cortex is an antagonist who fits the Mad Scientist archetype. He was inspired by The Brain, a character from the cartoon series Pinky and the Brain. The archetype was created for the fictional genre as a basis for eccentric characters who have a few social skills as a result of the time they spent studying too much. They have a narcissistic personality and want to manipulate the life and nature as if they were deities. Examples of characters within this archetype, in addition to Cortex himself, are Dr. Eggman, Dr. Heinz Dufresne-Smith, Professor Zandep, and Professor N. Isley. However, not every character in this archetype is a villain, as we also have Rintaro Okabe, Professor Frink, Professor Farnsworth, Rick Sanchez, and Doc Emmett Brown. Mimi There is a Dr. Neo Cortex Mimi based on a factual expression he makes during a cutscene in Crash to Insanity, moments before he attracts bees. When his animation is paused at a specific moment, he makes a funny face to many people. Many parodies and even fan arts have been made of this face he makes. Lex Lang Without a shadow of a doubt, the most famous voice actor for the character Dr. Neil Cortex is Lex Lang, who has been the character's voice actor since 2004. He gained exclusivity as Cortex's voice actor due to his performance, humor, and creativity with his lines. However, other Cortex voice actors are also notable. He sounded like that. And, uh... He was, and they said we wanted to be more absorbed with himself, so instead of being more about being evil, he's more of a maniacal uh, narcissist, so everything should be about how he's going to rule the world. So all along the way, the script was written so that it was all about, yes, you don't know who I am, but you will, because I'm going to dominate the world, you know? So like, everything was really big and... Um, no to the Bureau of Balance. Tremble before the might of Dr. Neo Cortex. You can call me Periwinkle. <laughs> oh, Nitro, will you ever learn? Evolve Array Dr. Neo Cortex is not the creator of the Evolve Array, but rather of the Cortex Vortex. The Evolve Array is a ray that physically alters any animal it hits, causing mutations that transform a common animal into a mutant anthropomorphic animal. The Cortex Vortex is a machine that alters only the mind of the already mutated animal. Its objective is to manipulate the animal's mind to transform it into a loyal soldier and part of the Cortex Commandos. Victor and Moritz Victor and Moritz were pet parrots that Dr. Cortex had when he was a child. He already had his own lab at the time. Although Quartex is not the creator of the Evolve Array, he tried to be, as it is known that he has been trying to build a working version of the machine since he was a child. Using his pet parrots, Victor and Moritz, as guinea pigs, Quartex tests his prototype of the Evolve Array on them. The experiment has an unexpected result, sending Victor and Moritz to the 10th dimension in my plan to create an army of super animals. The test subjects, my two pet parrots, Victor and Moritz. The only creatures I didn't load or eat. The experiment was proceeding as planned, when suddenly... My parrots were gone, lost amongst the infinite dimensions. I was heartbroken. <laughs> how I missed those twins, and how I long to see them again. But be careful what you wish for, young man. Back off, Grandpa! For your wish will come true. Breaking the fourth wall Dr. Neocortex breaks the fourth wall several times in some games. 
in Christ's insanity, he breaks it twice. The check bounced. Are you sure? <laughs> well, the past few years have kind of been slow. Wrath of Cortex didn't do as well as we'd hoped, and... <laughs> Come now, as we explore a new dimension! It should have been two new dimensions, but we ran out of time. And in Crash Tag Team Racing, he breaks the fourth wall several times. Oh, how excellent! I'm so glad that Uka Uka is not in this game. That floating fascist! Excuse me, gamer, are you trying to make me lose? Hey, you, gamer! You know it's not just my reputation on the line here. Quick, you, at the controls! Save me from utter humiliation! Oh yes, that's right. Stand there and hit the talk button to annoy the mad scientist. Next you'll spin attack, I suppose. You know how to shoot, don't you? Just curl your finger around the trigger and pull. What are you looking at, buster? It surely isn't my fault. Hey, aren't you supposed to be on my team? That had better not have been on purpose, you. Nice try. Next time, open your eyes when firing. I would have hit him, but this game is rated E. Direct your stray firepower away from Nina and myself. Sabotage the race in our favor and ensure our victory. Cortex Commandos. The Cortex Commandos are Cortex's idea to create an army of anthropomorphic mutant animals loyal to him to be used in his plans for world domination. Crash would be their general. Origin Cortex was born in a gypsy wagon that was traveling in Peoria, Illinois. Childhood Cortex was born into a family of unsuccessful traveling clowns. Since he was a child, Cortex has always preferred to read science books and already had a vocation for this area. But his family pressured him to pursue a career as a clown. Premature Baldness In Wombat Bios, it is stated that Cortex was already prematurely bald at the age of two. Revenge Dr. Neil Cortex seeks revenge on humanity for the things that happened to him in his past. Superiority Complex Cortex has a superiority complex, something common among villains. He seeks world domination and believes that his superior intellect is a justification for carrying out his megalomaniacal plans. Mood Swings There are times when he is happy and there are times when he is depressed. Cowardly. Cortex never challenges his enemies to physical combat because he is weak. Trigger. Sight, sound, or mention of clowns propels Neo Cortex into a furious rage. This is due to the fact that Cortex, in addition to suffering physical abuse from other clowns, also suffered humiliations from his boss Jimmy, owner of the circles. Smiling Jimmy's traveling side show, while Cortex and his family worked. Bullying Cortex was a bully as a child. His co-workers didn't like him. The letter N on his forehead is a mark of his childhood. When his family worked in a circus, bullies who were his co-workers called him and wrote an N for nerd on his forehead when he was 3 years old. Cortex was also bullied at school, as the bullies were jealous of his advanced intelligence for his age, something that made him pass the entered exam at a younger age than the typical age of those who passed. Years later, after embracing his destiny as a villain, Cortex glued a narrow N to emphasize the latter. Vietnam Veteran in Crash Tag Team Racing, Cortex has a line that reveals that he served in the Vietnam War. <laughs> Just like back in Da Nang! Good Cortex One of the main characters cut during the development of Crash Team Sanity was a benign version of Dr. Neil Cortex called Good Cortex. He would appear in the 10th dimension. Rehab Lab one of the main things cut from Crash to Insanity during its development was a level called Rehab Lab. At some point in the game, 
crushing cortex as personality would be swapped, with crush becoming evil crush and cortex becoming god cortex. Then, evil crush at cortex at request would have to beat up god cortex until he reverted to his old self. This would be the introduction of the rehab lab, as described in the Game Informer article. The game mode was called Mocky Dog, and the goal was to make the cheerful good cortex as angry as possible. Your fur is so soft and warm. Ah, something's wrong. Something's changed. A malfunction. Our personality switched. If you're evil, I must be... A pain in my chest. I feel... Nice. And I can't stand it. Help me! Nina, I'm so... Proud of you. No. Ah, Dendrobrium Thysiflorum. The prettiest of all orchids. Ah. Ooh, Mr. Tiddles, why could drink of milk? Ah, make it stop. You imbecile! What do you... Of course. Prepare the rehab lab. Please. Cortex Chaos. Cortex Chaos was a project by Traveler's Tales Oxford Studio that began development after the release of Crash to Insanity. It would be a kind of spin-off, since Cortex would be the main character. The project was presented through three different proposals, and all of them were rejected by the publisher of the game. Keith Webb, one of the main artists of Crash to Insanity, was responsible for the project. The project had an alternative name, the All New Cortex Show. For more information, check out Crashmania and Crashman Good Wiki. UFO Race Another content cut during the development of Crash to Insanity that is worth mentioning in this video is UFO Race. It would be a certain section of the game where a race is held between Quartex and the ants in UFO vehicles. UFO is an acronym for Unidentified Flying Object. 100% speech. In Crash to Insanity, Cortex has a speech that would be played if the player completed 100% of the game. Like much of Twin Insanity's content, the speech was cut during the development period. 100% impressive! You deserve something special! Get yourself down to your favorite restaurant, buy yourself the biggest, juiciest, most expensive steak on the menu! and tell them Dr. Cortex sent you. Explosions Cortex has blown up places several times, killing people in the process. The first time was when Cortex was almost 5 years old, when he used fireworks to blow up the main circus tent during rehearsal. Cortex also blew up the school's lab through a sudden failure in the school physics department tests nuclear power plant and survived it because he was not present at the time of the explosion. Cortex sought refuge in an abandoned bin factory after blowing up the school. Later times when Dr. Neil Cortex and his allies gained international wanted status after attracting the attention of the authorities when he blew up places that would not allow him to become a resident after he fled the school and took refuge in a bean factory. Victims Being responsible for several large explosions, Cortex accumulated a high number of victims even before moving to the Wampa Islands, starting with his own family, who were wiped out in the fireworks explosion in the main tents of the circus where they were, as well as other people inside. Cortex also blew up a school, eliminating both those inside the school and those located in the surrounding areas, such as much of the city and the local countryside, not to mention the inhabitants and visitors of the Himalayas, the Congo, the Antarctic Plains, the deserts of the Middle East and Chernobyl. Coco's Clothes has anyone ever wondered how Dr. Neil Cortex disguised himself as Coco in Crash to Insanity? In the first cutscene of the game, we see Dr. Neil Cortex immobilizing Coco with his laser beam gun, 
and then appearing disguised as Coco. There are pessimistic and optimistic ways to imagine how this happened. In the pessimistic way, Cortex took Coco's clothes off and put them on, leaving Coco lying vulnerable on the ground with only her underwear left. In the optimistic way, Cortex went to her closet and took her clothes from there. You might be wondering, if Cortex took Coco's clothes from her closet, then why did he mobilize her? The answer is simple. He mobilized her to prevent her from telling Crash that Cortex is out there disguised as her. Many thanks for watching. Trust me, it's easier when you don't suck pig toes. It's not my fault he sucks platypus eggs. Wow, this really compensates for my small... Uh, I broke my ovaries. I am Cortex, hear me roar. Cozy, ain't it? Rumor is you two chumps have got your mitts and some treasure, and I want a piece of that pie. <sighs> Hire an Australian actor, I said. Somebody who can do the accent. <laughs> <laughs> Cranky, I'm done for. And how are you?